Hey, and welcome to my kitchen. I'm Bertharabi, and today I want to sit down and make a meat soup. It's a storm outside currently, so if you can hear some wind noises, that's basically because there is a storm going on currently. And I want to make some comfort food. Uh, this is something that I just started making within this last year and usually I don't eat meat soup except for the one that I make. I don't know what it is that makes it different but this is uh, my meat soup video. Maybe you can learn how to do it. Otherwise I'm pretty much just gonna sit here and cut. So if you are preparing food or you're drawing and just kind of want to sit in peace and quiet with somebody else on the other side i'm here for you because this is not gonna be anything crazy this week just wanna sit down and make comfort food i use one two three liters of water and between one half to two kilos of a lamb meat I usually use somewhere between there because that's the size that fits into my pot when I use frozen meat. It's actually fine that they are clumped and stuck apart like they are here and they will come apart during the cooking process. The meat goes into the water while it's still cold and just make sure the water is covering all of the meat, especially if it's frozen. You bring that up to a rolling boil and once it's boiling or it's simmering, you put on a timer for 45 minutes and that's usually time I use to cut my vegetables. The vegetables that you need or the vegetables that I use is this one rutabaga, <laughs> I think that's what it's called. This is rova. Um, it's either one big one or two smaller ones. Uh, potatoes. I'm I have five of these, but it's generally like eight to 10 potatoes, but I choose these ones because this is kind of like two potatoes. One onion. I'm gonna use this one I already cut to use for something else. I cut the top off. Uh, this will make me cry, but usually one onion, uh, it's fine that it's missing the top part here. And carrots. So I have these slightly older ones they're color rainbow colored and then just regular old uh, orange carrots so I think I'll just get to it so I have a bowl for trash and I have a bowl for the whole cuttings <laughs> I might as well start with onion, start crying, and then be just kind of done with it. I have never made this soup with anything other than Icelandic meat. So if you are from a different country and you decide to make this, please let me know how it turns out because I'm super curious. So with the onion, I don't really like biting into uh, onion in the soup, even though it's kind of like stewing. So I just generally chop this down to what you would, the size slightly, slightly bigger than you would use on your um, hot dog. <laughs> if that's on any indicator, I don't know if this is more of an Icelandic reference, but I guess. Ooh. Some for the floor, some for in here. So this is kind of the size. Can you see? It's not that big, just like a, oh, here comes the crying. Oh, he'll know. Just get it in there and done with it. Oh my god. I 
like to peel all my <laughs> crazy but uh. all right let's give it a second if you have any onion crying tips uh, leave them in the comments this is me every time I cut an onion With my root vegetables, I like to cut everything off it. I mean, I guess you don't have to if you don't want to, but I do. I don't know how it tastes without it. Uh, <laughs> actually, the first time of me making meat soup um, was when we were moving in here. So I made <laughs> meat soup for everyone that came to help us uh, because we were kind of moving in the winter last February and it was cold outside and it's just nice to get a hefty like a good proper meal once you have done like lifting and walking and, and stuff like that and it turned out really good especially for I mean it's a daring thing to do something cook something you've never cooked before for like a group of people but otherwise if it would have turned out nasty i would have just like bought pizza or something and nobody would have been the wiser so i'm happy i did because turns out i make good meat soup so for the rutabaga oh it's strange on the inside Well, there's something a little bit wrong with it. That's annoying. Ugh. I've never seen this before. Like a slight darkness to it like but it tastes okay so I think I'm just gonna use it yeah it's good don't want it too chunky but because I still want to cook through so maybe like just a good die size like something like this you kind of want to have everything fitting on a spoon is kind of the idea so to me this might be a little bit too big it's like if you're cutting cheese what size would you cut I mean, I'd probably cut way too big because I really like cheese, but found a cube that was kind of completely mostly this stuff that's kind of weird so I'm taking that out because I tasted it and it doesn't taste too good like once it's just that stuff this is all gonna soften and become one cohesive mess this is gonna pull in some of the thing from the meat from the kind of soup and I think it's gonna be fine but since I tasted it and it doesn't taste crazy good, I, I decided to take it out.
this is some also <laughs> this is also something like if you have someone to cut with you it's kind of nice to just sit down and talk while cutting what still since there's something very comfortable and cozy about it so if you have some time if you need to spend quality time together and want to make a meal for the whole week i would recommend doing this because it's nice is in. Now we get potatoes. Potatoes. I like to peel them just like this. I find this is the best way to minimize like um, this is the least wasteful way of um, peeling them. I feel well, you can also use a knife I'm just a lot slower that way especially if they are not cooked so this is my preferred method just don't cut yourself This is a super juicy potato, it's kind of spraying everywhere. So I think all my stuff is gonna be super starchy around here. crazy week this week this week and last week uh, just finished up a project just in time before the super bad weather set in so I'm very happy <laughs> about that um, how has your week been I feel like so many people get stressed around like whenever the days get shorter so I hope you're doing okay taking care of yourself and your family and friends but gotta put your gotta put yourself first first If you get green stuff uh, in your potatoes, definitely you want to peel that off. That is sun damage and that can actually make you sick if you eat it, as far as I have read. Uh, so if you have a green potato, don't eat it. Maybe I should look that up before posting this. Um, or you should maybe look it up before you believe me. All right, so let's cut the potatoes. So everything is super starchy. You can just kind of see it on my knife. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe not, but it's, it's there. And the same goes for this. We kind of just want it diced like if you play board games you want to just do the die size 
from a board game. <laughs> And this is actually like something like this. That will fit nicely on a spoon. Here we go. And this is a lot of potato. But the rutabaga was being weird anyway, so I might as well just use this. this is what's very interesting about this soup is it actually gets better the kind of older it gets is like I don't know it just kind of starts to melt together more better or something I don't know so I usually make this and we eat it the day after because it's better and we eat it for like sometimes a whole week because it's a lot of food also so this is the perfect thing to make if you're having friends over or family or something or you just or you can also just freeze it it's also something you can do is to freeze it and thaw it out whenever you want to have a nice cozy warm soup that's like very good for you unless you don't eat meat then of course you won't make any of this <laughs> but you can still hopefully enjoy the video potatoes when handling knives and such watch your fingers don't want to hurt yourself that's also why I find this to be very kind of therapeutic is just I, I like to do this without listening to music or podcasts or anything it's just kind of something about it I don't know sometimes we're or I'm, I'm speaking for me of course but I can be preoccupied with just kind of finding anything to listen to or kind of distract my mind so I really enjoy cooking and just kind of being there while I'm cooking just is the least Aries thing I have probably said or done, but it's okay to go stray away from your <laughs> sign once in a while. I didn't even know Aries were chaotic and I definitely am when I'm sewing, but making food is just something else for me. It's just cozy nice. When I say Aries are chaotic, it's mostly <laughs> in terms of um, how Julian uh, cooks in Aries' kitchen. Uh, I know he's not doing that series anymore, but I really enjoyed it. Um, but that's not how I am. That's not my Aries' kitchen. I'm just very calm and collected. And methodical I'm I'm a good baker in in the in that way is I follow directions to a T like I said when it comes to sewing uh, that's not me that's where I am chaotic and don't have time for anything mm -hmm. 
Three purple, one extremely dark orange, and then the rest just these regular, regular orange ones. So it's like three, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's do it like that. I'm gonna do peeling, and this. At least most of this peeling will go to the rabbits and not into the pal here. Just because they like carrots. Obviously don't want to overfeed with the rabbits with carrots because they are starchy and very sweet for rabbits. So I'm just kind of going to keep some of those and give them tomorrow and kind of do it in intervals, if that makes sense. Ugh. I like these purple ones, but they look look like they're getting a little bit old. Maybe, but I, it still tastes fine, so I'm gonna just go ahead and do it. And you kind of have to just navigate the size of your carrots. I'll probably add some more because I cut a lot of this because it looks like it's about to get old. I think they can smell carrots. At least I have someone behind me. Maybe they're just, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I wonder if you can use these purple ones to color something or overall if you can use carrots to color stuff because I know if you if you have children and they get a lot of carrots uh, just as kind of snacks or anything like it doesn't turn them orange but it, it's it does though, <laughs> like ever so slightly, slightly, and I've seen it happen. And they don't turn orange, but they have like a yellowish hue. I don't know. And like stronger, like deeper yellow than like a natural, like their <laughs> usual complexion. At least for the kid that I remember, is because. They ate a lot of carrots and once this happened, the parent got the mm, advice or whatever that this could happen with, with carrots. Because obviously they are very, very pigmented. But it's nothing dangerous. It's kind of like your beef when you when you eat beef it changes the color of your pee kind of similar but yeah i think maybe i'm completely lying i don't know at least i remember seeing a kid that was like orange hued ever so slightly go over the I was asked to teach a little bit more Icelandic so if you go over the vegetables this is gulrot 
this is like yellow root um, I guess appelsine root would be is too long and convoluted uh, and also we have a fruit that's called appelsino so that could have been um, to complicate things but gulrot even though it's not yellow <laughs> and the same goes for the purple ones they're just also gulrot <laughs> um, the potatoes are kartablur and the onion is lökur so that's everything i use right so it's roa kartablur gulrætur lökur lambakjöt which is lamb meat and súpujörtir i'll find them and it's literally just dried uh, vegetables so it's dried carrots dried parsnip dried leek dried celery dried onion and dried stencilia yeah one more that i can remember the english word for so you add you also add this to your soup instead of vegetable stock or if you want to use vegetable stock instead if you want to make that from all the things that you made here like you can definitely probably do that i haven't and it's gonna make the process longer obviously but you can hypothetically you can do that um, some people also use rice for their kyotsuba i don't um, our soup is hefty enough as it is and this was more of a thing that you did to make it like make yourself fuller at least like if you have a big family this is makes it into a more like a, of a hefty meal I guess I just I didn't grow up with um, getting rice into the soup but you can definitely do that you can also which I don't do because I just don't like it is to use kvitkaus which is cabbage i don't like the texture of boiled cabbage so i just don't use it which is fine <laughs> With your carrots you don't want to cut them too crazy thick but like i said just anything that makes sense on a big soup spoon <laughs> just go for it and you can also just try it and if you like it but there's something you feel that is off you can always just make this soup again and change it up you can add stuff you can take stuff out this is kind of the traditional way but it's like nothing wrong with putting your own little flair on it i'm gonna add i think I'm gonna add two more carrots to this just because I feel like it but definitely make sure you have a big pot <laughs> so you can fit all of this There we go. 
once the 45 minutes are up, I usually add a little splash of water before I add all the vegetables in. I add one deciliter of the soup herbs or the soup yurtir and I let that go low and slow for 15 to 20 minutes, so like a soft simmer. And then I just turn off the stove and let it cool on there. From there you can actually, if you want, you can pick the meat off the bones and get all the tendons and everything out. I usually leave that in, it's not an issue for us. Just bring out the small plate for everything you can't or don't want to eat and we'll just throw that out when we're done eating. At this point you put in the salt and I don't have any measurements for the salt, you kind of just put uh, a good amount in there and just make sure that when you're adding like that you're adding enough but also you can't take away the salt that you put in there so just do it kind of step by step and put it in let it simmer for a second and then just taste it see if you need more salt there's also no secret that this soup is better the day after and even better the next couple of days after. I usually don't eat it on the night of making it, I eat it the day after and rest of the days after there. So if you're having people over and want to make them this soup, I would definitely recommend making it either earlier in the day before or I mean it's fine also just the evening before but the longer it waits, the more kind of juicy and nice it gets, in, in my opinion. I'd love to know if you made this yourself. How did it turn out? Was it okay? Did I forget a step? The reason why I'm not showing you the result of the soup is because I'm not gonna eat it tonight. I'll eat it tomorrow and for the next following days. So I really <laughs> hope you enjoyed it though. I've made it a couple of times so and I've tasted it now so I know it turned out nice for me. I hope it did so for you as well. Thank you if you weren't here to make a soup but just kind of chill with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>